Okay, so we are back at it with the weird camera angles and the car vlogs. I know Clay Emu would be proud. But today in this video, I wanted to talk about the University of Wisconsin Badgers because their season just recently came to an end. And there are three guys on that team that I think definitely do need some updates and we can talk about because they are some of the top prospects in the NHL. Of course, we're talking here today about Cole Caulfield from the Montreal Canadiens. We're talking today about Keandre Miller from the New York Rangers. And we're talking about Alex Turcott from the Los Angeles Kings. Now, just to give some context as to how these guys were eliminated and became technically free to sign if they wanted to, because this video is going to talk about whether or not they sign, whether or not they should sign, and what I personally see happening. The University of Wisconsin Badgers just wrapped up a season where things didn't really go all too well. Coming into the year, back in September, people were saying that Wisconsin could be a powerhouse this year. They had a returning Keandre Miller. They had all these guys coming in, these older guys, and then they had the new guys. The new guys being Caulfield, Turcotte, and a few others. And these guys, along with Dylan Holloway, who is also a freshman, but who is an NHL draft eligible this year, these guys were supposed to come in and totally change the game for the Badgers and totally make them competitive and lead their team in all these point categories and on the score sheet. Now, for the most part, that's what they kind of did. But Wisconsin was last in their division, and they got eliminated in the playoffs in the first round, and it wasn't really all too close at all. Now, we talked a week ago, I believe it was a week ago, something like that, about the playoffs and the University of Wisconsin Badgers playoff run that was going to happen. They started things out here in round one. It was a best two out of three series against Ohio State University. In game one, Ohio State won nine to one. Yeah, that's really not great. And in game two, Ohio State won two to one. So it was a little bit closer, but still the Badgers weren't able to get it done. Now, it's actually kind of funny. If you're a Habs fan, because I know there are a lot of Habs fans who will be watching this video, Cole Caulfield was a minus five in the 9-1 loss in Game 1 against Ohio State. So that doesn't look great. In fact, all three of the guys that we're talking about, Caulfield, Turcotte, and I believe Keandre Miller, were pointless in the playoff games. And if you don't know how NCAA scoring works, the playoff games are actually added onto the regular season games when you're calculating the point totals and everything. So, if we're taking a look at the point totals, Cole Caulfield finished off this NCAA season leading the Wisconsin Badgers with 36 points in 36 games. Hey, that's not bad. Alex Turcotte didn't play the whole year. He played 29 games. He only had 26 points. I believe that's the number. If I'm incorrect, then I'm incorrect. And Keandre Miller was over here. He played 36 games, but he only had 18 points. Now, we'll talk about Keandre Miller first, because he is the oldest out of these guys, and he is the guy who was drafted before all of these players, technically. Keandre Miller, when he was drafted in the 20s by the New York Rangers in the 2018 NHL entry draft, some people were really mystified by the pick. There were other players that maybe could have gone ahead, but at the same time, it was already in the 20s, so there wasn't any reaching going along with the Keandre Miller pick. But after Keandre Miller was drafted, he played within the University of Wisconsin Badgers hockey program, and he was really really, really good. The guy was, I believe he was just under a point a game as a defenseman, as a freshman. So coming into this season, there was a lot of expectation as to how he would improve on that number. But he was only half a point a game this year and his numbers actually went down. That's a surprise because people legitimately thought that this Wisconsin team would be much better. But it wasn't. And as a result, Keandre Miller's numbers definitely did get affected. Now, he is in a position to sign with the New York Rangers and either join their team or join the Hartford Wolfpack or whatever the case may be. He does have the option to do that because he is technically allowed. But do I think that's going to happen? Honestly, I could definitely see it happening. 
either he signs and he goes over, plays his first few games of NHL experience right away, or they try to send him over to Hartford. I know they like sending their guys over to the AHL, and they're very, very used to that idea. So if they wanted to do that, I believe they could. I wouldn't be surprised if they did. And to me, personally, looking at Ke'Andre Miller's season this year and seeing how he did go from a really good set of points per game in his draft plus one to a very mediocre points per game in his draft plus two, it's not a very big deal to me because if there's anything that NCAA and NHL trajectories have taught me, it's that one bad year usually shouldn't be enough to completely derail a top four borderline elite prospect. And we did see flashes. We did see moments this season where we were like, yeah, that right there is the Keandre Miller of last year. That right there is what made Keandre Miller so, so gosh darn good last year. Because there were so many moments where he took over a game or he took over a shift because he's able to do that. Keandre Miller has such a good skill set that, to me, one bad year shouldn't be enough to have you dismiss him and say, yeah, no, he's kind of heading towards bus territory right now or whatever. That's not going to happen. Keandre Miller is good. He's better than that. He's better than the numbers suggest. He was playing on a bad team. He is a product of circumstance this season. And I think he still can be very, very, very good. So whether that's with Hartford, whether that's with the Rangers immediately or maybe down the line, maybe he goes back to Wisconsin, which I'm not necessarily too sure if they would actually want to do that. But he is in a position where one bad year just did happen, and I don't think that's going to be enough to stop him. Now, speaking on Alex Turcott. Turcotte is a guy who came into this season, people were expecting the world out of Turcotte, but he didn't play the full year, he was just under a point per game, and if you take a look at some of the other guys, like Zagris, the other guys like Bold, actually no, Bold is a bad example, the other guys like Alex Newhook and all that stuff, there were a few 2019 drafted players who had a considerably better draft plus one in the NCAA than Alex Turcott did. Now, of course, just like with Keandre Miller, the team does play a part in that. The Wisconsin Badgers not being great and being the worst team in their division definitely will influence the numbers and the statistical profile. Now, at the same time, Turcott did have a few flashes. We did see moments throughout the year why Turcott was drafted fifth overall by the Los Angeles Kings. But rumor actually has it that there has been word. Now, this is from Reddit. This is from Twitter. So it's probably the least reliable source in the world. But just according to everything that I've been seeing, I've been seeing a lot of buzz about Alex Turcotte signing with the Kings and joining the Ontario Reign for a potential playoff run in the AHL. Now, that was something that people have been labeling as the path the entire time. The entire way through, it was always seen as Turcotte was going to go over here, he was going to play with the Badgers for one year, and then he would sign and go pro. So if that happens, then best of luck to Alex Turcotte. He's a guy who definitely does have that elite potential. He was drafted fifth overall for a reason. His play style is very efficient at both ends of the ice. The guy has an incredible motor, but when you're playing against men in the NCAA, the dominance isn't really all too easy to spot in comparison to when you're playing with a super elite U18 team against other U18 teams and some college teams. So, Turcotte, to me, while the numbers may not have suggested an incredibly great draft plus one year, the guy was still able to carry this Wisconsin Badgers offense at times, and sure, he wasn't one of the top producers like Cole Caulfield was, who actually led the team in points, but Turcotte was a guy that definitely transitioned into the Wisconsin Badgers program, and he helped Caulfield doing that as well. They kind of helped each other because they were the two US NTGP boys coming over to the same team that wasn't a great team. And they definitely helped each other out in that department. But 
The last one here that we're going to talk about today is Cole Caulfield, drafted 10 spots after Alex Turcotte in the 2019 NHL entry draft. Caulfield finished up this season with 36 points, 36 games. He was pointless in the last two games for the Wisconsin Badgers. And the guy is in a position where Mark Bergevin already said, yeah, he's not ready for the NHL. So we will leave it at that. Whether or not Cole Caulfield decides to go back or he decides to stay, I think, or excuse me, sign, I mean, I think a lot of that does have to do with what happens to Turcotte and Miller, because Turcotte and Miller are very, very good players, and they definitely help out your hockey team. If the Wisconsin Badgers find themselves in a situation where Turcotte leaves, and then Keandre Miller leaves, and then all the seniors, they graduate, to me, I don't really see any benefit to Cole Caulfield staying in Wisconsin one more year. Now, if he does do that, he will, I, in my opinion, he will just tear up the league because the guy will prove himself to be worthy enough to play on a team, solo carry a team. He will be a sophomore. He will be a second-year player. He will be bigger. He will be stronger. Well, big isn't really anything for Cole Caulfield. He's already 5'7", but... At the same time, to me, I think a good step up to Laval would be very, very beneficial at this stage in Cole Caulfield's career if the other really good guys with the Badgers don't come back. Now, if they do come back and they're able to totally build up an environment of winning, then I would want Caulfield to experience that. I would want Caulfield to go back to Wisconsin, totally dominate things, and find success on a winning team. But... If the team is unable to do that, then I'm not necessarily too sure how confident I would be in allowing Cole Caulfield to go over there on a bad team and run things to the ground. Now, Mark Bergevin did come out and say that Laval is a different beast and the AHL is a different kind of league, which is true to a fact. But if Cole Caulfield does spend some time in Laval, he builds chemistry with Paling, he builds chemistry with Code Kanyemi, for example, then... I think it would be a really interesting idea to let him kind of uh, mester down there, kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Marinate down there. Yes, that's a word I use quite a lot. I can't believe I forgot that. But if Cole Caulfield can learn some of the physical signs of the game, learn how to defend himself against men, learn how to defend himself against some of the toughest men to play hockey against in the AHL, then I think that could be very beneficial to his career. Now, I say some of the toughest men in the AHL because if I were to play hockey in the NHL versus the AHL, the NHL would be faster, the NHL would be more skilled, the NHL would have me quicker on my toes a little bit more, but the AHL is filled with all the guys who aren't good enough, and I'm using the air quotes very, very strongly here, to play in the NHL. So you know the AHL has some hunger. The AHL has some tough love down there. And it's kind of commonly seen that the AHL is somewhat of a goon league compared to the NHL in terms of the physicality. So if Cole Caulfield could go and master the AHL's physical game, then I think he can go over to the NHL and do well too. But he needs that first step in Laval, in my opinion. So if he does that next season in September, or he signs a contract, goes to Laval this season, then I would be really, really floored with that because the guy already was a point per game on a bad team. I don't see the need to potentially send him to an even worse team that has no good players, like no Keandre Millers or no Turcotts. They're going to have Dylan Holloway still, but at the same time... If Holloway is good enough, you never know. But that kind of wraps things up here because Cole Caulfield is the last one that I wanted to talk about. But overall, the Wisconsin Badges are eliminated. Turcott, Keandre Miller, and Caulfield are all free to sign. So you can comment down below what you think about these three prospects, whether you're a Kings fan, a Rangers fan, a Habs fan, or just a prospects and a hockey fan in general. I hope you enjoyed this video. So just that trust 99. And bye.